Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about yet another common problem with a lot of data sets, especially when we are trying to solve a classification type of supervised learning problem. And that's a problem associated with the imbalanced data. So let's understand what is an imbalanced data set. The representation on the screen that you see right now has two classes. You're talking about classification, so you have to segregate the reds from the blues. And you see a roughly equal representation of reds and blues on this one, which means you're giving equal emphasis to both the classes, and that's how your data is. But what if the data was like this? So now what happens is that you have relatively lesser instances of reds compared to the blues. And why is that a problem? This is a problem because when your machine learning model is being trained, it's actually learning about the data, it's going to learn more or better about the class blue because that occurs in abundance. So it tends to understand blues relatively better compared to the reds. Then how do we solve this problem? There are two broad approaches to address this. First is that we can do undersampling, which means if we want to give equal focus or equal emphasis to both the classes, we can bring the majority class, the one that is in abundance, equivalent to the minority class. That is the one which is in a scarcity, which means we are going to drop some of these blue class observations randomly. And let's say after we do that, we are left with this scenario. So now you have comparable counts of blues and reds. This definitely addresses the problem that we're going to give equal emphasis to both the classes now. But at the same time, if you realize, compared to the original scenario, we've also lost a lot of records. For this reason, maybe random undersampling like this may not be the best way to go about it. The other way is oversampling. So let's say this is the scenario where we started with, and now to give equal emphasis to the class red, can we oversample some of the existing observations? It means that you do multiple selections of the existing observations. So what you end up getting after doing that is something like this. So these counts basically represent the number of times a particular observation has been selected. So for example, this observation exists three times in your data. This observation exists five times in your data. Originally, it was just existing once. So some of these observations still exist just once, but a lot of these observations have been repeatedly collected. As you must realize, the drawback here could be that we are not adding any new knowledge. We are just repeating the existing observations multiple times. In fact, a better oversampling would have been something like this. You at least have a variety of observations to learn from, rather than just simply repeating the existing observations to say that we want to give equal emphasis to both the classes. So now let's talk about some of the variants of oversampling and undersampling. To start with undersampling first, there is a specific undersampling technique that's known as the Tomek undersampling technique. What does it do? It tries to find out the nearest observations wherever the minority and majority class observations are closest. It's going to pair those observations like these. And of these pairs, it's going to then drop the majority class observations like this. So you've dropped some observations, and finally what you're left with is something like this. If you see, it's not really dropping the majority class to the extent where it will reach an extreme, or it will become equivalent to the minority class, but it's trying to drop some of the observations which are very close. When we do it in code, there are different options to drop more observations as well, but this was just an example to show that this is the logic that works. So the majority class observations are being dropped, not randomly, but based on the proximity to the minority class observations in a step. Coming back to the original data and talking about oversampling, there is a very popular oversampling technique that's known as SMOT. That's an abbreviation which stands for Synthetic Minority Oversampling Technique. How does it work? So this works on the logic of nearest neighbors. For each point, it's going to find out the nearest neighbor. Let's say we talk about this point first. So which is the nearest point for this? Within the minority space, this is the nearest point. Let's say then we talk about this point, which is the nearest neighbor? We probably would point to this one. Now these two maybe are nearest, and for this point again, this is the nearest one, so we can leave it here. Let's say we pick this point now. Which is the nearest point to this? Maybe this one. To this point, which is the nearest point? Maybe this one. Likewise, to this point, this is the nearest neighbor. And to this point, this is the nearest neighbor. So it's kind of finding the nearest neighbors. And then it does linear interpolation to place the synthetic records in between, which will be something like this. Because these two points were neighbors, 
it has placed a record in between. Because these two points were neighbors, it has placed a record in between. Likewise, everywhere else. Now, these points that you have generated would become a part of the class red. Right now, we represented them using a darker shade just to indicate that these are synthetic records. But eventually, these will be treated just like the other records in the minority class. So they would eventually become something like this. Now, as I said, SMOD is a very popular oversampling technique, and there are many variants of SMOD. So there are variants of SMOD like borderline SMOD, SVM or support vector machines based SMOT, K means SMOT, and many other variants. Some of these are iterative in nature, which means it would not stop at just generating the synthetic records using the actual records. It will also use combinations of the generated synthetic records and the original records and other synthetic records. For example, let's say you know that this is an actual record and this is a synthetic record. But it can use a combination of these to further create another connection and populate a synthetic record in between these. Similarly, this is a synthetic record and this again is a synthetic record and it can connect these synthetic records and create a new synthetic observation in between, like this. So overall, after you do SMOT over multiple iterations, you may be able to see much better presence of the minority class. To what extent we want to do this can be controlled by passing appropriate inputs to the model. It doesn't have to become 50-50 all the time. We can always do it in a step up way. So you can imagine where we started, we had much lesser representation of the red class, but where we are now, we have a lot better representation of the red class. That's the power of SMOT. But there is a drawback with SMOT as well. If you see, because of linear interpolation, it tends to form a lot of linear patterns in it. You can see this is almost a line. This is again almost a line. There are many linear patterns that you will see, and this has some disadvantages. These disadvantages are owing to the fact that it's not giving a relatively higher or lower weightage to a minority observation based on where it is located. Can we build some intelligence on this? And doing that only, there is another type of oversampling techniques, which is known as ADASIN. It stands for Adaptive Synthetic Oversampling. It borrows its fundamentals from SMOT, but does a little different job. It tries to give relatively higher weightage to those minority observations, which are difficult to classify. For example, you can imagine this observation here being red and closer to blues is a relatively difficult observation to classify compared to this observation, which is well within the range of other reds and away from the blues, farther from the blues. So this time, when we give relatively higher weightage to the observations which are difficult to classify, we will generate synthetic records around these observations like this. So you can imagine it has generated more such observations where the classification was difficult. And these then become a part of the minority class. Not only this, if we do it in an iterative fashion, it would further add more records corresponding to the synthetic records as well. So it will be something like this. So not only the earlier records that we generated became a part of the minority class, using those records, it can further generate more synthetic observations. It doesn't mean that it completely discards the easier to classify observations. It does create some synthetic observations around these as well. But as I said, it gives a relatively higher weightage to those observations which are difficult to classify. And then finally, we've achieved a decent amount of oversampling where the observations of the red class in terms of count are comparable to the blue class. Now let's see how do we do this in hands-on and, and this is a much easier code in practice. So I'll show you that example in the hands-on. 